What's up everyone, today we are going to be painting Selly from Zombicide's Green Horde. What I'm focusing on with her is trying to do no washes whatsoever. Everything we're going to be doing naturally through layers, through wet blending. I'm going to do a lot of different technique work on her and I'm hoping that uh, you will enjoy the way it came out. I think she looks amazing, probably my proudest achievement uh, so far in painting. Hopefully you'll agree once you see her up close. So let's get down to the table and I'll show you how I did it. All right, so to get started with Sally, we are going to do Zenithal highlights. So I primed her in a flat black and then did a white with the airbrush from a 45 degree angle and then again a little extra on the top. I'm going to be using a size 0, a size 2, and my workhorse brush as regular. And we're going to begin with a reddish flesh from Vallejo's Nocturna line. The reason I'm doing this is, as I said in the intro, I'm trying to not do any washes. So I'm going to do everything by starting with like the darkest color and then only adding some low lights if there is a particular space that that needs extra darkening but we're gonna try to lighten everything up so starting the paint in the darkest and then moving up this does take longer than the washes uh, would but I think that this is like a professional style so here you can see after uh, two layers this is a base paint, so unlike when I did the Megan video and I had to do 500 layers, uh, two layers is enough. So here we're using a light gray and a purple, mixing those together to get this sort of consistency here. It's uh, more of a purplish gray than a grayish purple, um, and a little bit more purple than we will eventually make it be, but that's again, we're starting with the darkest color. But I was saying, um, I'm definitely not a professional painter, but I try to do the techniques that the pros use because obviously they know what they are doing. Um, so I want to, you know, try to emulate them as much as possible to try and, uh, make something that, that, you know, is, is show quality worth if I can. So here we're using a golden purple, which is a very vibrant purple, and stegodon scale green, which is actually blue, um, and mixing those together to get a really vibrant, deep blue color that has a little bit of a green hue to it from the stegodon scale green. But overall, it's just a, a really pretty blue. I like the color that came out with this, and we're using this for her skirt that is on top of her pants here. So I didn't mention it before, if you're just listening um, and not looking, uh, we used that purplish uh, gray on her pants and I had forgotten um, I'm doing her arms as well. So her arms, both uh, both the left and right arm have a, um, I don't know what to really call it, like a sleeve, I guess. I mean, like, obviously, they're sleeves if you're wearing a shirt. I don't know if they're still sleeves if you don't have a shirt on, is what I'm trying to say here. But that is uh, is what we painted, is all those fabrics, and then blue is the skirt that goes over top of the fabrics. So here I have a flat brown from Vallejo, and then golden vat orange and golden diorlide yellow. Both of those are very bright colors, and here we are going to start wet blending. So this is flat brown and a little bit of orange. Now you want the colors to be very watered down. Now if I had to do this again, I probably would not have used uh, the golden colors because they are so thin. They're, they're very vibrant. They're very pretty colors. But when painting them on the plastic, um, they take a lot of layers to become um, opaque. They start off very translucent. So here you can see I'm wet blending. Well, basically what I do is I put on uh, the, the brown mixed with a little bit of orange. And here you can really play with the colors. So I'm not really giving a formula on this as I had to do this a whole bunch of times. I'll get to that in a second. But I put on the brown and orange and then I put on the orange and yellow. And those are pretty mixed together on a wet palette. They're thinned down. Put them both on and then I use a clean brush 
and come in the middle, uh, come in between them and try to blend them together to make a smooth transition, which sort of comes out to this orangish color. And I do it on both sides. And so the reason I'm not giving really a formula on this is I had to go back and forth, back and forth and do this over and over again because as you can see, the gray background color of the miniature is showing through just fine on there. That is not what we want. We want this to be those colors. So um, it had to be done multiple times. So I have black and a darker gray, which is Mechanicus Standard Gray. I mix those together in about a 50-50, and here I'm going to do the shoes. I like to do this real dark leather color, like this black leather color, and I think that the mixture of the dark gray and um, the... The dark gray and the black make it better than if you were to just do pure black, which kind of gives it a pleather look, like a fake leather or plastic look. Because um, really the only thing that's that black is is plastic or you know something synthetic. So now I'm just using pure white, and the pure white I'm dragging it along the top of um, the kukri, which is what is what the knife in her hand is called. It's a K-U-K-R-I kukri. And I'm dragging that along the top. It's blending in now with the brown. And again, like I said, I'm putting more and more layers on here of this brown orange, the yellow orange, and then pure yellow, doing pure white at the tip. Um, and then just keep wet, wet blending up and wet blending back down. Wet blending up, wet blending back down until I was able to get um, really the look that I, that I wanted. If you're going to take advice and do as I say, not as I do, I would say use model paints whenever you're trying to wet blend. Use those other kind of paints for some really cool, vibrant, pretty like eyes, glowing eyes, glowing runes, things like that. But you do not want to use them on things that you need a wet blend because they just don't have the coverage needed to um, do it in a in you know in a quick air way. I also would have base coated the entire thing in a brown color first and then started wet blending on top of it. So you can see now uh, the kukri as it's stuck up in the air there as I'm painting just pure flat brown on the bone sword down below because I learned a little bit, hey, maybe the bone sword I should start with putting down some brown color around but you can see the kukri is, is looking much, much better after more and more layers have come on. It's starting to really glow and take on that, that like fantastical look. So I'm also using the flat brown uh, to distinguish it from the leather that is on her feet. I wanted a lighter color of leather. I also think that the lighter color looks better with the lighter pants and the blue skirt. Where if this was red, I would probably say do use a reddish brown, which would be a darker color. So I'm coming back up here again to show you I just wasn't happy with where it was. So I went and covered it in the yellow. And then I'll wet blend the same exact way back down again. So it is something that I had to keep going back to. And I know I've now railed on it a ton. And you're probably thinking, yeah, we get it. But the point is, is that if you mess something up, and maybe you didn't even mess it up, but maybe you do something and you're like, ah, not exactly the way I wanted it to turn out, you can always fix it. And just spending a little bit of time doing what you want it to, to do over and over and over again makes it look so much better. So now you can see it's much more tonally in color what I want it to look like. It is warm and it is fiery on the tip. I should say it's warm on the handle, fiery on the tip. So these are the colors I should have used. Clear orange and flat red. I mix them together about 50-50 and that's where we're going to do the hair here. So I didn't want it to be pure red and I definitely didn't want it to be pure orange because then she'd look like a clown. But I'm doing this in... and the camera makes it look a little bit more orange than it does in person. But we're doing about a 50-50 here of orange and red. You're just going to do a small section like that. And then you're going to take pure orange and paint a circle right on the top of the head. And you can probably guess what we're going to do next. 
and that is we're going to clean our brush off and come back and wet blend the two together again so that we have a brighter orange spot on the top that fades down into the red and brown. And this will take probably two coats um, because you're using model paints in this one, the, the Vallejo, um, it, two coats is, is plenty. So here I'm using a raw sienna and buff, which is a very light tan and a uh, like a khaki color. And I'm painting this in the areas opposite the brown. So I've done like a, a, I do like a layer of the raw sienna, which is what you're seeing here. And then I come back and do some raw sienna mixed with buff. And then I do some pure buff. And that gives me uh, about four different shades to begin with. So I didn't, I, I didn't make the mistake of trying to wet blend first. Like I did with the Kukri with the Bone Sword, I wanted to coat it first and then come back and wet blend. So here you can see this is the pure, and there's a little tag on the end of some flash that I missed. I always clean my miniatures up first, and there's a little bit of a tag on the end of the Bone Sword that I missed. So I get that, you'll, you'll see all of a sudden that that little tag is gone. But I'm mixing here, or sorry, I'm, I'm painting on uh, before I start the um, wet blending. I, I'm doing pure buff, which is that very like sand color or like real, real light khaki color. And then from there, you can see I've now gone back and wet the colors. I put wet colors on there and I begin to wet blend them. So they do have a base below them of solid color. And then I go through and wet blend them. And I pretty much wet blend the entire thing back and forth. I don't know if that is the best way to do this. I have no idea if a professional would say, hey, that's actually a really good color gradient. Or if they're going, uh, you're completely wasting your time. If you know, if you are good at wet blending, um, down in the comments, tell me, was this a complete waste of time? And I did this all wrong and I could have done this way better. Obviously, with a kukri. I could have done it way better because I've already acknowledged that and I did it way better on this one. But you can already see this is um, the perfect like flow of tone from dark to light that I wanted. Here's Umbra Lumber, which is a really dark chocolatey brown and that I'm going to make her uh, leather top is going to be that chocolatey brown. So that's both. Um, I, it's hard to tell in the character art if that is leather or if it's cloth. Um, so to kind of be in between, I just picked the real dark brown and did it that way. I figured that would be the best way. And I'm showing here on camera because it's hard to paint in front of the camera that there is some right be behind her hair. So this is where we're at so far. I think she's looking pretty good. And that's basically all the base tones on there. Yeah, I really like the way that the bone sword came out. I think that it looks so good. Uh, with that with the wet blending. I don't think doing it any other way would make it look nearly as good So here we have the gray and the purple and this time we're gonna add some raw sienna So if you already have it on your wet palette, uh, you can see there I then Added a little bit of the raw sienna to it. There was a cat here stuck on the end of that uh, a little bit of the raw sienna to it a little bit more gray Trying to get positioned here and now anywhere that the light would be touching that's where we're going to paint this on so we're going to lighten up her pants where if you were to see the pants in direct light you would think oh those are gray but when you see them with some shadow you can see that there's some like purple in the shadows and so you want to not go all the way to the edge of any any piece of it um you also just have to Sometimes say what would be realistic and sometimes think about what would be, you know, like what looks better. So right here on the back of the legs, would that realistically be highlighted? Probably not. But if it was just solid purple, it would be kind of boring. So going through and highlighting areas that sometimes wouldn't realistically have light, um, just taking a little bit of of artist um 
I can't think of the word. Never mind. But just doing that as an artist, you can you can choose to make it your own that way. So here we're now going to start adding some white in. So the white is, you want to add this very gradually. You do not want this to become super bright. You don't want to, basically what you don't want to lose is the grayish purple in there. So I'm, I've added some white in there and now we're going to go gradually each step a little bit more white, making it brighter and brighter and brighter and doing smaller areas. As you can see here, each time I'm just doing a little bit of a smaller area. And the paint is thinned down, so even though it looks really bright when you first put it on there, it seems like you're going, you're like, oh no, you know, I put too much on, I've made it too bright. You don't really have to worry about it. So here's all the gradients. All the way in the far left was where I had started, all the way in the far right is where I had ended. So I had gone about five or six different gradients and then here I'm actually using the brightest version of it to just pick out some edge highlighting and some of the like creases on the um, on the legs and arms. So this one isn't going to get painted in any sections at all. This is just for highlighting like creases. So I'll do those on the legs and the arms and you can see none of it was too bright at all. It all looks like it very naturally blended together. I think she's coming out really, really good. I'm not exactly sure what I was showing you there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this was, um, I, I got some red um, and and white um, to lighten up the red and this is going to be for she has some strings and some stitches that are in her pant legs so I'm not can, I, can you please lift it up just a little bit hold me there we go okay so you want it really thin down so what all right, so stick it on scale, scale green and uh, the purple and now we're adding some gray blue to it to start lightening it up and we're going to lighten um, in increasing the exact same way we did the pants. You're going to add a little bit of that gray blue in there and you're going to paint broader areas, any kind of flat areas and then of course like raised peaks and then you're going to add a little bit more of the gray blue and do smaller portions the peaks and like any of the cut areas then you're gonna go and do it brighter again and get just the tops of the peaks and then finally end with uh, some edge highlighting with with uh, the brightest version of that so definitely the brightest version should be going up here at her waistline also uh, when she does turn around pay attention um, I did paint that red on the all of the cords going across her legs so that's what I was trying to show in that vid that part of the video but apparently uh, messed it up so here is fairy flesh which is the brighter area and we want to get all of the raised areas here so this is going to be most of what her her skin tone is actually going to look like so that that reddish tone is going to for the most part go away because she has a lot of raised and flat areas but any of the places that it is a either um, being hidden by where there would be a shadow or there's some sort of cut in her skin or uh, some sort of valley in her skin uh, that is going to remain this darker reddish brown color and then she is going to get changed into um, a much lighter skin tone because she's an elf and so I wanted to I wanted it to be a reddish hue also to match her her hair 
um, but I did want her to be a little bit paler. So now we're going to mix that medium flesh with uh, the fairy flesh. So last time I said fairy flesh, not fairy flesh, medium flesh. So now we're doing the fairy flesh, and this is going to be reserved for any of the raised portions. So she's got uh, some of her ribs there. She has um, some of her breast next to her shirt. She has, of course, her hands, the top of her hands. Uh, she has abs. She has some back muscles and some shoulder muscles that need to be highlighted. So you're going to want to get those. But you can see that because she, most of her uh, skin is the same um, like distance to the viewer. And there isn't a lot of valleys. There isn't as much that needs to go on for the highlighting. We will. And this is that's a part, a part right there. Right down along the bottom. Which I think is is just trying to make it look a little bit better and it's not really realistic. The burn flesh you want to thin down incredibly to make sort of a glaze. And you're only going to use this in a couple places. Number one, you're going to use it in the eye sockets. Okay, now we haven't highlighted the face yet because we want to do the low lights before we do the highlights. But we want to put it underneath the chin and around the neck. And then a little bit under the ribs and under the arms here and around the um anywhere where fabric is touching the skin but you want it thinned down to be sort of a wash um you'll see here that it looks really dark and if you left it too thick it would come out that dark and it would make it look like her stomach was sunken in but you'll see after a little bit that it fades considerably and the reason it fades is because i have it so thinned down that it's, you know, all mixed with the water as the water evaporates. It starts to look more and more subtle. And um, next time, well, once we see it all dry, you'll see that it's much more toned down and much more of what we were actually looking for. So here, finally, we have highlight skin. This is going to go on the face, the tips of the fingers. And this is just to bring out the brightest areas. This is also one of those colors that is very watered down because if you just painted it on you would make her look like actually white like ghost white um we don't want that we want her to have a natural skin tone um albeit a little fantastical because she is an elf and also a little bright and vibrant because we want her to stand out on the table so we're just doing a little bit on her shoulder there her t her it would be her left shoulder um so to our right I'm putting a little bit on there um, I'll try to narrate so that it, when I finally figure it out. So just a little tiny bit on there, which you could also forego if you didn't really want to do that. You want to put it on her, her, the tops of her ears and then, you know, a little bit on her, her hand here. And even though it looks very white in this, it always fades down to a much, uh, su like subtler color. So what, I, what I'm doing here is just taking a little bit of it off just to make sure because it being so thin it does sort of glob on. So we're back to the buff and the buff color is my favorite color to use for strings. I think that it like the khaki color works way better than like an ivory or a white. Those are just too bright. I think that this um, may... The main point that I want to make is that like I don't want to notice the strings until I look for them and I think with white on there they're just so bright that you like your eye is drawn tor towards them and that's not important. The model you want to look at her swords, you want to look at her face, you want to look at her awesome hair, you want to see you know her as a whole, you want to see the scenery, you don't want to see the strings um, and I think when they're too bright your eye is drawn towards them. The bone sword also has some like engravings on it and um, you want to water down. I've said it a million times. It's something that like new painters don't do. It took me a year to learn. Water down your paints. Once you water them down, you can actually, you can see on the bone sword there um, that I had done like the little, the little carvings in the bone sword. This is a warg flesh. It's a deep green. It's kind of like an emerald green. And she has a couple little uh, bracelets 
on both arms and she has some um, ringlets around her neck and so I am painting on those. But yeah, if you, I feel like if you use a khaki or a light light tan instead of white for things that you don't want to notice or like you just sort of want to be part of the entire picture, I think that that works best. Yeah, using using white for um for that the the scabbard on the front, I think would have just been too bright. So now we're coming back with raw sienna, and raw sienna is the color that I like to use to highlight um, leather. So I'm going down the side of her uh, top here, and I'll also go in some of the leather, not all of it. Um, I'm using the side of my brush. It is watered down, it is thinned, and I'll use just the side of my brush. Here I'm using the tip of it because there really isn't a side to the top. I would have painted the skin. But I'm just going through and putting an edge highlight on that and putting uh, just some edge highlights on the side of the uh, her belt and her scabbard and whatever that little thing is that she's carrying. You can see it on her skirt. There's like this round thing. I don't, I don't know what it is. So where I'm painting these little metal things, I'm using um, a different form of silver. I feel like this is like kind of a dull silver. So I like to use this one whenever I don't want things to be too shiny, but I do want them to be shiny. But the thing that they were connected to was um, this little weird hoop uh, that I don't, I don't know what it's actually for, but it's a leather hoop. Um, so, all right, you're like don't care about the hoop. All right, so let's move on. We're doing the scenery now. So I've already taken her outside and sprayed her with the um, matte varnish. So she's already been matte varnished. Um, I like to do that before I do the scenery, especially since I'm going to be holding her and putting glue on and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I want to be able to take that, the glue off and all that off without ruining, you know, the paint job. So I'm putting on a sand paste. It's just a regular, um, very inexpensive. That tub on the left there, uh, I got for I think $9.99. It'll probably do 500 models. Totally worth it. And again, we have huge miniatures. This time the autumn blend we're going to be using. So last time I didn't show you, if you want to put a rock on, put it in the, um, put it in the paste and then put the paste around it and when the paste dries it will be no pun intended rock solid completely pun intended so here we use citadel's uh shade bealtan green any sort of green shade would be fine but you need to let that paste dry if you do not let it dry completely you can accidentally touch the rock and move it around um, also when you use when you put the shade on you see that it ran all over the place there That's fine for the most part. You're not too worried about how much it pools in each area but like to come back and clean it up you'll start pulling up some of the paste and Then you just run into a whole mess Let it dry give it at least two hours probably closer to five or six So now I am putting some PVA glue into a uh, bottle cap and mixing water in. Now normally I do not use this workhorse brush for this. I like to use those really really cheap brushes. Um, the brush was so dirty already. <laughs> so you have to let the the Beel tan green dry before you do this as well or else it'll just all mix together and become gross. Um, so that's another like 30-45 minutes that you need to let it dry. But this uh, this brush really needed to be cleaned bad anyway so I just put that in there. It's not really a big deal. So let me use some of the Army Painters Battlefield, some of the brown earth here. And this I keep the same for all of the heroes of Zombie Side. Um, because I want them to all be noticeable that they're heroes. Their their bases I change a little bit from each one, but for the most part they get the the brown earth and then they're going to get the green moss. Brown earth, green moss, brown earth, green moss. That's what we do. But this one, I wanted to do something a little bit different as well. With Megan's, I had made flowers. 
So here I'm just pushing it down just a little bit to make sure that it sits in the glue. And then I turn her sideways and tap off the, and then drop her in completely. So there you go. But tap off all of the grass and then uh, get it off of the base. The other um, thing that you notice is I tapped her on the side there. If I didn't spray her first and did that, that would have taken chunks of paint out. So that's why it's always good when you're getting to the last stages, it's easy to forget how you're handling the miniature. And it's really important to spray them down with your matte varnish before you finish. So I'm taking some of the autumn foliage and just putting it on some super glue that I dabbed on. I just put a li few little dabs on. Um, now I, it was, this stuff was a little hard to work with in this way, just v little tiny bit hard. Um, it is not difficult at all. I would not tell you to not use it. I would suggest that you do use, uh, huge miniatures, loose foliage, if you want to make some autumn leaves on the ground. So that's what it looks like. She's all finished here. Spinning around showing off how awesome she looks. She's there with one of my mechs versus minions minions You see how much bigger she is. They're both raising their um, Toasting their swords to the gods. I guess we can call it But I think uh, she came out really really awesome. What did I learn with this one base coat before you try to do any wet blending? Um, I'm not sure if you should base coat with the darker coat or base coat with a lighter coat but that kukri took so many layers that were just completely unnecessary. Uh, the bone sword, I think, came out excellent. Um, I'm really, really proud of that one. And I will see you guys all next time. Please leave in the comments uh, any criticism or things that you think that I should do better. And I will be back in a couple days with a new video for you. See you soon.